Finally, we're going to get to hierarchical clustering, which is another form of clustering, but different. And this works off a distance matrix. So we'll use our same data here, and we'll compute distance of x, which computes a, a 100 by 100 pairwise distance matrix. And we make a call to hclust. So hclust is the tool that we use for doing hierarchical clustering. So by now, you've become pretty adept at, at R. If you want to find out more about hclust, you just go help hclust, and you'll get help online. Um, if you, once you've computed the, the fit, if you, you, can, you know how to print it out. And you know, if all else fails, if, if something else you'd like to find out, searching the web is a really good idea. These days, if you search the web for R-related queries, tons of stuff comes up, and you can often find out all kinds of interesting information. So here we ran hclust with method equals complete, and we'll just plot the data. And it plots a dendrogram that shows the clustering. So if you recall, this is a bottom-up clustering technique, where it continuously joins together smaller clusters to make bigger clusters until eventually you get to one big cluster. Now we know there's four natural clusters in these data and from the heights of the arms of the dendrogram it's evident that there are four big clusters here and these will almost certainly correspond to the, the original um, divisions um, um, in the data that we created. Um, complete is, is, is how it decides how close two clusters are. And what complete does is it uses the largest pairwise distance between a point in one cluster and a point in another cluster. Um, there's other methods we can use. So single linkage clustering, it's called. Um, it's the same call, um, except method equals single. So instead of looking at uh, using the largest distance, it uses the smallest distance. And it gives you a rather different looking picture. And the four big groups that we saw aren't as easily evident in this one. It seems to have found one, two, three groups, and then somewhere in here is a division into the fourth group. So single link linkage clustering tends to, 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 to find long, strung out uh, clusters, because it's just looking at the closest point between um, the clusters. And so um, you might not get nice, clumpy balls like, like we expect to see in this case. Average is somewhere in between, and indeed the plot for average looks somewhere in between. But I think for these data, I think we probably prefer um, the method equals complete. So we're going we're gonna to compare um, with, the, uh, with the actual clusters in the data again. Um, we'll use a function cut tree, um, and we'll cut it at, at level 4. Okay, so that's the first thing we'll do. And, and so that cuts our original cluster tree. Um, let's just plot it. Let's get, get its plot up there again. Here's the dendrogram. So we've cut it at level four, so that means at the point where there's four clusters. So now we're going to identify who's in each of these clusters. And for that, we use the function cut tree. And all cut tree does is you tell it the level that you want, which is four, your, the number of clusters you want, it's four, and it gives you back a vector of cluster assignments. So now we can use the table function to tabulate those assignments with the, 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 what we know to be the real assignments, which is given by a variable which. And so you get this little table here. Again, the orders are, are arbitrary here. And so what you expect to see is, is some big numbers with zeros elsewhere. right? So the big numbers are the 17, 31, 30, and 19. And then the small numbers are the, mis, the, the misidentifications. So there were three misidentifications here. And we can also do a tabulation um, and compare it with um, k-means clustering. And with k-means clustering, there were two, two mis. Uh, two uh, disagreements. So both k-means and hierarchical clustering um, didn't know the true assignments, and they agreed mostly, but on two points they disagreed. Now, you can, there's, there's fancy ways that you can plot hierarchical clustering trees um, that, that actually tell you, that color, the, the, say, the leaves according to 
um, the original cluster membership or some other variables. These tend to be rather technical. I, I actually looked to see how to do this by searching on the web. And even though I was, able to, I was able to do it, it's probably too technical to put in this demonstration, but if that's something you wanted to, to do, I, I urge you to have a look. So people have written functions for doing that. Um, what we'll do is something a little simpler. The, the plot command for, for dendrograms for, for cluster trees has a labels argument, and we're going to label it according to the original cluster assignment. And if you can see here, um, you'll see that all these guys down here are fours, there's twos, there's ones and, th and threes. It's not that clear, but um, if we had a bigger place to plot, you'd be able to see which, which of the points were, were misassigned. So again, use the help, help to find out more about hierarchical clustering. And, and again, if all else fails, go and, and search on the web. And once again, this is a R markdown document in R Studio. So we can knit it, and then we get a nice HTML document which gives a summary of, of our results and, and with any figures we made in, in one nice document. And we got our, our figures. This is something you can share with some colleagues um, or to show the analysis that you've done for them um, or for the demonstration. So there we go.